Good morning. You are seeing a live view of Launch Pad 6, Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where a Soyuz 2.1A booster stands fully fueled, ready for launch to send an American astronaut and two Roscosmos cosmonauts into orbit on a quick two-orbit journey to reach the International Space Station. This is Mission Control Houston, live from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, as countdown clocks are ticking backward for the launch of the Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft atop its Soyuz booster at 11.23 a.m. Central Time, 12.23 p.m. Eastern Time, 9.23 p.m. in Baikonur. Earlier today, the Soyuz booster was fueled for launch by engineers in Baikonur, a process that was completed just a few hours ago. The launch control team in Baikonur reports that all systems are go for launch with no issues being worked as the countdown enters its final phase. Here in Mission Control Houston, the team is monitoring the Expedition 71 crew and space station systems on the International Space Station and is preparing to support the arrival of the Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft later today. The, Soy the station population will increase temporarily from 9 to 12 people with the addition of NASA astronaut Don Pettit and his Roscosmos crewmates, Soyuz Commander Alexei Ovchinin and Flight Engineer I Yvonne Wagner. The crew is all set to begin a flight of just over three hours in duration to the International Space Station with docking scheduled for 2.33 p.m. Central Time, 3.33 p.m. Eastern Time later today to the Rosviet module of the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Pettit will remain on board the space station through March of next year, returning home at that time with Ovchinin and Wagner on Soyuz MS-26. Pettit's launch today mirrors that of Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov, who is scheduled to launch to the International Space Station as part of the SpaceX Crew-9 Dragon later this month. This is providing a reciprocal crew exchange capability to maintain safe and continuous space station operations. Here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, the Orbit 2 team of flight controllers is currently on deck. They completed a handover period just a few hours ago. And the team here in Houston is being led by Flight Director Judd Freeling, who you can see in the middle of your screen. Who, and to his right is Capcom or Capsule Communicator Luca Parmentano. The Capcom is responsible um, for communicating with the crew aboard the International Space Station and serves as the voice link between teams on the ground and the station crew. Freeling, Parmentano, and the rest of the flight control team are currently monitoring the systems on the International Space Station, which will be the final destination for the Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft later today. Yes, I fixed it. Copy. The team in Mission Control Houston are also working with the team in Mission Control Moscow. You are now seeing a view from the balcony of the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, just outside of Moscow. Launch through spacecraft separation is controlled at the Blockhouse and Baikonur, but at the time of spacecraft separation, the flight control will be transferred to the team at this Russian Mission Control Center. And now you are seeing a live view inside the Soyuz capsule. Again, inside the capsule, we have NASA's Don Pettit and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin and Ivan Wagner. Obchenin is in the center seat, and then to his left is Ivan Wagner, and to his right is NASA's Don Pettit. Today's launch marks the fourth space flight for NASA astronaut Don Pettit. He first flew to the International Space Station as part of the Expedition 6 crew, which launched on STS-113, the Space Shuttle Endeavor, and then he returned to Earth on a Soyuz TMA-1 in 2003. His next venture into space was part of the STS-126 mission of the Space Shuttle Endeavour in 2008, and then he returned for a third visit to the space station aboard Soyuz TMA-03M in 2012 and was part of Expeditions 30 and 31. With the crew in Baikonur completing their training template, the Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft was encapsulated into the upper stage of the Soyuz booster in the integration building last week. After the three stages of the Soyuz 2.1A booster were mated together, the Soyuz rocket began its trek to the launch pad shortly after sunrise on Sunday, and then it was hauled to the pad horizontally on a rail car in a process that took about 30 minutes to complete. 
Once at the pad, the Soyuz was raised hydraulically to its vertical position for final pre-launch preparations, where it stands today. The whole Soyuz spacecraft is 24 and a half feet long with an overall volume of 301 cubic feet and comprised of three modules. The descent module, situated in the middle of the Soyuz vehicle, contains customized seats for the crew members during launch, entry, and landing, and contains all the controls and displays necessary for the flight. It also houses life support systems, batteries for the re-entry and landing, and the parachute and soft landing rocket engines that slow the Soyuz just before touchdown as the spacecraft lands in Kazakhstan. There are eight hydrogen peroxide thrusters located on the module, which are used to control the spacecraft's orientation, or attitude, during the descent until parachute deployment. The descent module also contains a guidance navigation and control system used to maneuver the vehicle during the descent phase of the mission. This descent module is 7.3 feet long with a diameter of 7.1 feet and a habitable volume of 124 cubic feet. It is the only portion of the Soyuz that survives the return to Earth. The orbital module at the top is 9.8 feet long. It connects to the descent module via pressurized hatch. This is where the crew has a small amount of room to move around following launch during the flight to the space station. It has a docking mechanism, hatch, and rendezvous antennas located at the front end. The docking mechanism is used to dock with the space station, and the hatch allows entry into the orbiting complex. The rendezvous antennas are used by the automated docking system, which uses radar, to maneuver toward the station for docking. There is also a forward-looking window in the module that the crew can use to take manual measurements of distance and closing speed with a laser rangefinder in the event of failure of the rendezvous radar system. The propulsion module houses the oxygen storage tanks, the main engine, and the attitude control thrusters, avionics, and communication and control equipment. The propulsion portion of this module handles all orbital maneuvers, including those needed for the rendezvous with the space station and the deorbit burn at the end of the spacecraft's mission. Before they are deployed, the two solar arrays are folded against the body of the propulsion module, which, along with the orbital module, separates from the descent module after the deorbit burn. The solar panels span almost 35 feet. The entire spacecraft serves not only as a crew transport vehicle to and from the space station, but also as an emergency return vehicle in the unlikely event that the crew needs to leave the station unexpectedly. Retract service towers to horizontal position. Copy. Retract service towers to horizontal position. Ready to arm the launch escape system. Copy. Ready to remove safety devices from uh, Tower 575 and Top Umbilical Tower. Copy. Remove safety devices from Tower 575 and Top Umbilical Tower. Copy. Arm launch escape system. My team was evacuated to a safe area, asking for permission to go offline. Copy. You may go offline. Launch day for the three crew members began several hours ago, as they were awakened at their Cosmonaut Hotel crew quarters to begin their final pre-launch activities. We are going to go ahead and take a look at what they've been up to this morning in preparation for today's launch.
and the stores even so are getting closer but remain as called. You can see the crew members as they were exiting their Cosmo Hotel crew quarters to begin their final pre-launch activities. Thanks a lot to everyone. Look at us, please look at us. After arriving at the integration building, each crew member underwent final medical exams and suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits. One by one, each of the crew members moved to a mock-up of a Soyuz spacecraft seat to allow technicians to conduct pressure checks, ensuring that their suits were free of any leaks. And there you can see as the crew completed their suit pressure checks, they went to exchange some final remarks with senior, senior NASA and Roscosmos managers. We are okay. We wish you a great launch. No, this is like a. So tomorrow, uh, get your flight completed. A great flight. Uh, the best of luck, uh, and I want you to know that our hearts are with you. We'll be watching. It sucks. You're sitting on the wrong side of the glass. <laughs> I, I wish I was there. <laughs> Thank you. And from the ISS program at NASA, I'll just say we're going to have a lot of great work for you. Wish you the best expedition. Uh, good luck. Thank you. And there we saw NASA's well, Ken Bowersox and Dina Cantella exchange some final words with Don Pettit. The crew members then left the Site 254 integration building. Godspeed. NASA astronaut Don Pettit there at the bottom of the stairs. Leosha. Good luck. One minute readiness. Uh, everything is proceeding for the schedule. Uh, control is uh, on board and we will be broadcasting uh, um, the launch. Yes, we're uh, I copy you. Everything is on, uh, in order on board. We're ready for launch. 45 seconds away from today's launch and counting. Equal to internal power. Internal power. 3rd stage switched to internal power. The first umbilical tower is now separating and we, third the stage is on internal umbilical power. umbilical demated. Additional lock and tower commands com confirmed. Copy all. We have 20 seconds until launch and counting. Yeah. Sequence initiated. We have outer um, on board power. Launch command issued um, for ignition. 
We now have engine sequence second start. Umbilical the second umbilical tower is now separating. The engines are at maximum thrust, booster ignition now at full throttle, and we have liftoff of Pettit, Ochinen, and Wagner, now on their way to the International Space Station as part of a two-orbit journey. Launch vehicle control system parameters are nominal. We are seeing good vehicle parameter, parameters so far. First and second stage engine performance is nominal. Launch vehicle structure parameters are nominal. Vehicle performance is continuing to look good. The spacecraft is stable. Engine chamber pressure is nominal. Sixty. We're now just over a minute into today's launch. We are seeing good yaw, pitch and roll, heading downrange. Seventy. The flight is nominal. We are just about a minute and 20 seconds into today's flight. The velocity is over 1,100 miles per hour. Launch vehicle control system parameters are nominal. Everything continuing to proceed as planned. Just a few seconds, the escape tower will be jettisoned. First and second stage engine performance is nominal. Launch vehicle structure parameters are nominal. 110. We are about a minute and 55 seconds into today's launch. In just a few seconds, the and we now see first stage separation. Launch escape system jettison confirmed. Side booster engine cut off. Side booster separation confirmed. The, the spacecraft is stable. Copy. 140. The crew members reported they are feeling well, and we are having Launch good pitch roll and yaw of the vehicle. All parameters on the vehicle are normal. 150. We are now about 2 minutes Second and 37 seconds into today's flight. The launch shroud will be jettisoned shortly. We have the 160. Nose ferry will be jettisoned confirmed. We are now seeing a live view from the Soyuz rocket. The, the spacecraft is stable. The vehicle is stable. The Soyuz is currently traveling at a speed of about 4,700 miles an hour. Launch vehicle structure parameters are nominal. And we just saw a second stage separation, and the third stage has ignited. That's for luck one. Everything's okay on board. We feel great. Soyuz is now being propelled by the single engine of the Soyuz third stage. This engine is providing 67,000 pounds of thrust and will burn for about four minutes. Everything's fine on board. Reporting for luck one. Waiting for the separation. And we now have confirmation of third stage separation. The single liquid fueled engine has shut down and has dropped away at an altitude of about 126 miles. We are now standing by for solar array, uh, solar array deployment. And we have confirmation that the solar arrays and, and antennas have been deployed. And control of the spacecraft from here on out will be overseen by the Russian Mission Control Center in Kuryov, outside of Moscow.
And now on your screen, you can see the onboard control panel. This is basically the screen that the Soyuz crew is seeing. And on that left upper side, you can see that crosshair camera that we were previously seeing. And you can now really see the International Space Station coming into view. Range 2 decimal 9 kilometers, range rate 8 decimal 9 meters per second and closing. ISS in the West Vaco Center. Copy. And we are now about 23 minutes away from today's planned docking. The Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft is about one kilometer away from the International Space Station and continuing to close in at a rate of about 3.6 meters per second. And about five minutes from now, Soyuz will get within range of the space station and then go into its fly around. We are expecting that fly around to take place around 2.15 p.m. Central, 3.15 p.m. Eastern time today. And that fly around will start at a range of about 400 meters with an angle of 54 degrees. And there on your screen now, you can see a live look of the Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft as it closes in on the International Space Station. This view is coming from some of those external cameras aboard the International Space Station. And you can see as it conducts that impulse five burn, you saw a couple of short bursts there from its engine. And again, that impulse five burn is part of a series of six burns to further fine tune the spacecraft's path to the International Space Station. The Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft is now less than 500 meters away from the International Space Station. And once it gets to that 400 meter mark, it will begin its fly around. Monitor K-15, we uh, have confirmed the pre-chow signal. And there you see the crosshair view from the Soyuz MS-26. You can see it is working to align itself with the docking probe on the Rossviet module. We have uh, cone station keeping. Uh, we are expecting cone station keeping. And the vehicle is now about 150 meters away from the International Space Station and continuing to close in. Range 135 meters. Range, range uh, rate is 0 decimal 79 approaching the station. And the Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft and the International Space Station are currently flying east of Casablanca as the Soyuz closes in on its final approach to the International Space Station. Once the contact and capture takes place and we allow the relative motion to dampen out, that docking probe, the forward docking probe on the Soyuz that you see, will begin to retract and then hooks will close and we will have what is known as a hard mate between Soyuz and station. Range rate inaudible. Approaching the station. Crosshairs are aligned. It does match the center of the OSCA. And the Soyuz spacecraft is now 30 meters away, closing in at a rate of 0.13 meters per second. At the time of contact and capture, that will be about a tenth of a meter per second. We're expecting contact. We confirm contact. We have capture. Uh, 2232 capture. And we have confirmation of contact and capture of the Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft to the International Space Station at 2.32 p.m. Central, 3.32 p.m. Eastern, as the space station and Soyuz were flying 260 statute miles over central Ukraine. 
And we're standing by to see them go ahead and open that station hatch. And you're now getting a live look inside the International Space Station where you can see that hatch right in the center of your screen. I opened it. I opened it. So I and CP3. Okay, while well, they're opening the hatch. In the seven five seven transfer a four to M. Where are they located? BMP nineteen and Ipica are they in the M R M one? Okay, let us take a look. You can now see that they have opened that station hatch, and on your screen there is Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko, who is currently serving as the space station's commander. And now we see that Soyuz hatch beginning to open, standing by for crew to come on board. <laughs> the hatch separating the International Space Station and Soyuz was opened at 4.58 p.m. Central, 5.58 p.m. Eastern to officially welcome the Soyuz MS-26 crew aboard the International Space Station. Alexei, don't forget step 8.3. And there is NASA astronaut Don Pettit flying in to the International Space Station on your screen now. And he was followed by uh, Roscosmos cosmonaut Yvonne Wagner. And coming up in the back is the Soyuz commander and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexei Obchenin. And there we go with the final of the trio aboard the Soyuz MS-26. The Soyuz commander for today, Alexei Ovchenin, being greeted by his Roscosmos crewmates. Station, good evening. This is Dmitry Kalashnikov from MCC Moscow. Greetings to you. Good evening. Uh, greetings to all uh, ISS crew from the Russian Flight Control uh, team, and we are glad to see Alexei Ivan and uh, Donald uh, as part of your crew, and uh, we are hoping for productive work during your half-year mission. Good afternoon. Thank you for these uh, kind words. Thank you. Uh, we are going to have a handover now. Uh, you will be preparing uh, uh, for work, and uh, Oleg Dmitrich will be preparing for return. And uh, you have a lot of people now on the station, and it's great to see you all. I wish you good luck, uh, good training, and uh, return back. Thanks a lot. And uh, Svetlana Mironova wants to join uh, me in these greetings. Uh, she is the lead flight director. Congratulations, uh, Alexei, Ivan, and Donald on the uh, arrival and beginning of the new expedition. We are glad to see you all and have a great evening. And uh, I'm uh, giving the mic to Glavny now. Thank you. I'm glad to hear you as well. Uh, 
I also uh, wish you a great mission, congratulations on your arrival, and uh, hopefully you'll get all your objectives completed. And I'm giving the floor to Houston. Uh, thank you, Sergey. Station, this is Houston on Space Ground One. On behalf of the entire team in MCC Houston, congratulations to Don, Alexei, and Ivan on their successful launch and return to the ISS, and in so doing, contributing to today's new record of having 19 humans in Earth orbit simultaneously. Godspeed to the newly expanded crew of Expedition 71. Uh, thanks very much for those great words. Expedition 71 has been a continuous adventure, and uh, this is another part of that adventure that we've been looking forward to for a long time. It's been uh, great to get our guys up here and uh, setting this record. It's uh, just great to be up here for now. And I'm going to let Don say a few words here. And he's saying hello. He's home again. Yeah, it's great to see Don back up there uh, in, in his happy place. Uh, so, Station, please stand by for MCC Moscow. Guys, congratulations again on your arrival. The event is over. Uh, unless you have any words to say. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.